So the next theme, I've called it deep learning. Um, it's really, lots of teachers talked about depth. So this is one quote I've picked out to kind of demonstrate this. So this is a, a teacher and she's saying, rather than moving the child higher, she means onto different content, I'm looking for greater depth in what they are doing. She's looking for greater depth. So this is another really important theme, I think. And you're probably noticing that this is the third theme, so we've had alignment between what, how they want to teach and how they are teaching. We've had their sub development of subject knowledge, and now we have depth. You're probably noticing that all these themes are really interlinked. So the fact that it's being aligned, the fact that their subject knowledge is being developed, is leading to this idea of depth. So they're realizing and they're spotting in lessons that the learning and the discussion that's happening is going much deeper, OK? I've got another quote here, which I'll just read out. A teacher said, well, before, we didn't have the right vehicle. But now, with this approach, uh, we, can, we know how to go deeper. So teachers are using the textbook, and they're using what they've learned from the training uh, that they've had in this approach. And they're realizing that mathematical concepts that you teach in primary school really go a lot deeper, whereas in the past, perhaps they'd focus too much on teaching processes and teaching to get to the answer, OK? And I've mentioned that the textbook is one, way, one thing that teachers often mention that, they, um, that is a really useful tool that enables them to go deeper. There's a second thing which every single teacher mentioned as well, and it's about the use of manipulatives, the use of concrete materials. Every teacher said, when I give the children the concrete materials and I give them the problem to explore, even the most able children and the poorest ability children, they are able to go much deeper than they had actually expected they would. So there's something about this exploration with concrete materials that's allowing teachers to take the thinking and the learning in lessons much deeper than they would have initially. So many teachers say that dialogue and the questioning and discussion that's happening in their classroom is one of the major changes. OK, so if those last things were kind of changes in the way they knew how to teach maths and, and that change between how they wanted to teach math and alignment with how they can now, dialogue for them was one of the main things which kind of had come as a bit of a surprise, the amount of talking that was happening in their classroom. So two quotes there. First one saying, I've learned to give them time to explore. And that teacher in particular, when she's talking about exploring, is talking about that exploratory kind of discussion that's happening. And the second one, it's like 17 different minds contributing. And this is something which is really interesting, because lots of teachers actually linked the, uh, when they were talking about questioning and discussion that was happening in their classroom, they linked that with their enthusiasm to teach. So we asked them a question. We said, how do you feel when you teach maths? And almost all of them, again, responded by talking about the fact that the discussion that happens in the classroom leads to them being really interested in their math lessons. And many of them talking about how, whereas they used to find math teaching a little bit dull, they now find it really interesting because of the discussions. What they're saying is that these discussions are allowing them to see how children are thinking. And interestingly, a couple of teachers even talked about dialogue, but not in the sense of discussion, but in the sense of nonverbal. So children who are using journals to create a kind of mental dialogue about what they're learning about and to kind of capture their thinking in the lesson. Uh, let me just find this quote, because I think this is a really interesting one. Um, the teacher said, I can just see their thinking and I feel excited. Final um, theme is pupil response. So we asked teachers, well, in your maths lessons, how do you see children responding? How do, you, how do you feel about the way they're thinking about maths? What are they saying about maths? Uh, so this is a, one quote which I think summarizes lots of the things that teachers said. So uh, she's talking about her pupils. They haven't got this idea that they're going to be judged on what they're going to do or worry they're going to have a wrong answer. I think that's really powerful. And again, this quote is uh, representative of the things that lots of teachers were saying. This idea, and I guess it links back to that last one, dialogue, this idea that children, they're not afraid to say their ideas. And so perhaps in this, you know, with these early findings, we can start to theorize that 
perhaps this approach is one way, there's something about this approach which is enabling children to deal with that feeling of new stuff being presented with new ideas, being presented with something that they're possibly going to really struggle with, okay? And lots of teachers said this. They all were saying that their children are happy to have a go. They're happy to saying things. Um, I think there's a really important word in that quote there as well, which is judged. Um, if you think about the way teaching works, not just in primary, but in secondary as well, um, it's kind of based on teacher judgment of things, isn't it? We judge children all the time. Uh, even when we give them a bit of praise, oh, that's great. It's judgment. It's like saying, hey, I'm the teacher and I'm going to tell you that you're great because I know all this stuff. And all the other children in the room then think, oh, they're the great one. I've just got to copy what that child's doing. And immediately their thinking is shut down because they're looking, that's the one the teacher wants me to do. So we have to think, this is, this is real food for thought here, I think, which is how do we create a classroom atmosphere and what is it about this approach that creates a classroom atmosphere where children don't feel judged?